Okay, this video is called How to Get Good at Wrestling or How to Become a Better Wrestler. Okay, I'm going to talk mostly from the perspective of my two coaches because they're the best wrestlers I ever work with. This right here is Dave Schultz. He's a world and Olympic champion. He was the head coach at Stanford University of Wrestling. Um, he wrestled for University of Oklahoma when he was in college. Here he is uh, winning the Olympics against the German Martin Nosp. Um, and the thing about this guy, Dave, when I started my freshman year at Stanford, he was the assistant coach. And we ran sprints, and he was real slow. Um, we lifted weights, and he was weak. It was his off season. He was a little bit fat and out of shape. And I thought to myself, you know, how did this guy, he's fat, weak, and slow, become national champion? Um, and then what I learned was the reason he was national champion is his technique was so good. He had the best technique of any wrestler in the whole world. And that's one thing that you can get exponentially better at compared to everyone else. You can only get a little stronger than other people. You can only get a little bit better endurance, um, a little bit better mental toughness. But you could be a thousand times better than someone else in technique. So that's the, the key point. One of the key points of this whole talk is if you're a young person, you're trying to become really good at wrestling, focus on technique. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say about Dave is when he was a kid, he was uh, kind of pudgy. He was dyslexic. His nickname was Pudge. And um, he liked wrestling because it gave him a way that he could become strong and be successful. And he was a total fanatic about becoming good, which is typical of great uh, athletic performers as they become obsessed with development. And he would ride his bicycle from the junior high team to the high school team, practice with the college team. And so he was competing against the Stanford College guys. He went to Palo Alto High School, you know, it's just across the street from Stanford. So he was getting that level of competition and practice. And he became like the best high school wrestler in the history of the United States. He won the United States National Open, pinning Chuck Yago, two-time Iowa national champion. Um, rather incredible. Okay, and then here's his brother, Mark Schultz. And Mark Schultz was very different than Dave. He's a little bit bigger than Dave. And he had... Uh, a low VO2 max at a lung. So a lot of wrestlers, like here's a, he's wrestling Ed Bannock. This is in the NC2A Championship Finals. And Bannock by this time was already a two-time NCA champ. And everybody thought he was going to be a four-time NCA champ. And Schultz was the underdog from Oklahoma. And basically um, what happened was uh, Mark Schultz kicked his butt. It was, it was a great match. I think it was like great, the best wrestling finals, NCA finals I've ever seen in my life. Best wrestling match ever. So, and both of these guys were incredible. They both went on to become Olympic champions. Um, I show you this though because some interesting things about Mark Schultz that he had to overcome. He started late in wrestling. He had a low VO2 max. So like these Iowa guys typically would have a lot of good endurance and just wear people down. Um, and then when they're tired, they would defeat them. But Despite his low VO2 max, he kind of learned how to stall. Here's his brother Dave. He was always beating on him, and he realized he could never score on Dave, but he learned just to defend and stall. And once he could stop Dave from scoring, then he gradually learned how to you know, have an offensive uh, style of wrestling as well. Um, he had the best mental toughness of any wrestler athlete I ever saw in my life. And he did a lot of things that seemed to be bizarre at the time, but they worked for him. He would, for example, not speak to anybody all week before a big tournament. And his quietness, he would wear sunglasses around too, so you couldn't even understand what he was thinking. It was kind of scary talking to him. But man, would he, would he have a peak of intense energy when he would get out on the mat? It was incredible to see. And that psychology of holding it all into reserve uh, seemed to really help him for the competition. Walter Payton, the great uh, Chicago Bears running back on football, was a little bit like that sometimes too being quiet for prolonged amounts of time, and then coming out on game day with just incredible bursts of energy. That's one thing great athletes are able to do, and great performers in other areas, is to summon all their energy to make it you know, available when they're performing. Uh, so after he beat Ed Bannock, he did a backflip, the famous backflip, and then he's also being held up here by Andre Metzger, who's a national champion from Oklahoma, and there's Dave also won the NC2As that year, so the three national champions, this is incredible year for Oklahoma. Okay, so Dave, there's Dave Schultz, there's Mark Schultz, they went on to be World Olympic champions, and then there's the whole story of Foxcatcher. This is the book by Mark Schultz, and this is the best book to read to teach you to develop mental toughness. It's nothing like the movie. It's more about how he went from not knowing anything to becoming the best in the world. 
and the intense ordeals he went through. Sort of a lonely, painful uh, quest to become great. If you compare these guys to the Iliad and the Odyssey of Greek legend, he'd be kind of like Odysseus, the clever, wily guy, and he'd be more like Achilles. Um, so anyways, this is the book to read for a young wrestler who wants to learn how to become great. That, and I would read the Dan Gable stuff too. Dan Gable stuff's a little bit predictable, but it's still great. Okay, the Mark Schell stuff will be unpredictable. You'll have never seen anything like it. Um, and again, it's totally different than the movie. And there's a recent documentary that came out. It's at UFC Fight Pass. I'll have the link for that at the end. Okay, so how to become a better wrestler. Um, you do, you got to do more than other people. If you just do what everyone else does, you'd be like everybody else. Okay? Your performance will also kind of level off and be predictable in, in its rate of improvement. You don't want to be in the steady state. You want to break out of the steady state and rapidly improve. So one of the key points you know mentioned earlier is focus on technique. You can be a thousand times better than other people at technique, um, just like Dave Schultz did. He was like what Bruce Lee was to martial arts. That's what he was to wrestling. Um, for endurance, the way to get good endurance is push yourself to exhaustion every practice. Push yourself farther than your that you go beyond your fear. So you just pass out and lay on the ground. Um, because if you're doing that in every practice, you'll have extra energy for competitions. And you're going to be in some big competitions and big tournaments where you're going to have to wrestle five or more matches in a two-day tournament. And you want really good endurance. Plus, look at Iowa. A lot of Iowa guys really didn't have that high a skill level, but they were in such fantastic shape. They wear down their opponents. That's a very valuable way to win in collegiate style, you know, folk style, American style of wrestling. Um, get more experience. You'll become uh, more sophisticated quickly in the sport of wrestling, which means wrestle all year round. Go to the tournaments. Um, you, can, you can double your experience. You can double your rate of improvement by going to those tournaments. And even if you don't qualify when you're in high school, go to the state tournament and watch it. If you're in, if you're in college and you don't initially qualify for the NCAAs, go to the national tournament and watch it because you'll get a sense of the level of competitions and what you need to do to make sure you're ready for that the following year. Okay, as far as technique, um, all the guys who became great that I've seen, they all stayed late after practice and constantly work on refining their technique. You know, they talk to the coach that knows the most technique and they keep on refining it. You should watch, you know, if possible, watch films of your own competitions and analyze how can you improve. Ask your coach or mentor to analyze how you can improve. It's good to have a friend you can talk about wrestling technique and strategy and development and uh, all those things help to accelerate your rate of improvement. Um, if you can, you know, go to the wrestling camps. A lot of times there's real good technique you can learn at those camps. Find a mentor or a coach. Um, ask them to help you. It's sort of like the Schultz brothers were busy trying to coach all the guys on the team and I was scared of them. I was a little, you know, freshman, sophomore and uh, who am I to ask them for their time? But my sophomore year, Mark Schultz, you know, I was, I was actually kind of going, went through a bad time getting re-injured and stuff, and I even had briefly thought about quitting, and Mark Schultz came and he talked to me. He said, Pete, you got to hang around with me. You're hanging around with the wrong people. You need to hang around with wrestlers. You need to move into the athlete fraternity. And uh, he goes, next couple of months, you work out with me. And so uh, I just hung around with Mark Schultz, and, man, I got twice as good in one year. And it was I should have done that right from the first day I walked in the door. So don't be afraid to go up to the best coach and let him know you really want to get as good as you can because then they'll think you're more worth you know, spending time with and teaching you stuff. Um, nowadays, there's all these DVDs of wrestling technique, and they're quite good. I've seen a lot of them. Uh, there's online technique and stuff. Go watch all that stuff. Learn as much as you can from it. Um, when you're in wrestling practice and you wrestle a guy who you know you can beat, don't just try to score a lot of points or go through the motions. Focus on doing new stuff, You know, stuff you can't get yet on guys that are as good as you or better than you. Develop it by wrestling these guys who are not as good as you, and you'll once you can get it on them pretty easily, then you'll be able to use that technique on more advanced opponents. It's also good to learn how to be a pinner, you know, like Gene Mills or Wade Shallis, because you're going to go through these big tournaments, and if you can pin your first three guys, you'll have a lot more energy for you know your fourth, fifth, or sixth matches. Um, so it's great to be able to pin. Plus, also I've seen some really good guys, like some of these Iowa guys. Um, if, they, if the match goes to the third period, they're usually in better shape than their opponent. They just wear them down. But you catch them in a cradle or something, you can pin those guys. And uh, you can pin them in the first period. So a good pinner is um, kind of like a boxer with a good knockout punch. They always have a chance to win. 
Um, even if the other guy might be better than them in lots of other ways. Okay, as far as the psychology, again, Mark Schultz is a great guy to study, and Dan Gable, guys like that. Um, oh, one last thing on technique. Uh, another guy who was real interesting was John Smith. He was like a, a five-time world champion. Uh, also, you know, from sort of that Oklahoma State School of Wrestling, and he was real slick, and uh, he had that low, low uh, single leg. That was a great move for him. Uh, but anyways, he's another good guy who really developed a wide range of technique. Um, let's see. I liked Maxwell Maltz, his book on psychology. Uh, I thought that helps you to get into your top form. You have to build up your confidence. It's good to be arrogant in the sense that all the, the great guys are kind of arrogant and stuck up. Um, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe you can win, that you could do it. If you don't have that, then you stay away from the modern world. The modern world sort of feminizes and pussifies everybody. If you want to be a tough wrestler, hang around with wrestlers. That's another thing. When I was at Stanford, it's kind of a wimpy place. And when I lived in the dorms, I'm, you know, I'm sort of hanging around all these non-wrestlers. And yeah, a lot of them are nice, but they don't have the same mentality as a wrestler. You know, like being around Mark Schultz, you're sitting there listening to him talking, you wrestling the Russians and the Tbilisi tournament, all this stuff. And, you know, when you hear about him talking about winning a world level competition, you're like, gosh, I should at least, you know, dominate my conference. Come on. Um, so that inspires you. Um, study the biographies and documentaries of the great wrestlers. Again, like the Schultz brothers, Dan Gable, John Smith, and other great wrestlers that you like. Um, if you can't beat somebody in your room, and I used to have to wrestle, you know, Dave Schultz and uh, some other fantastic guys. And uh, if you know you can't win, at least learn how to stall and defend and frustrate them. Always be working on something that you can improve, and, and that'll help you. You know, like Randy Lewis used to always wrestle Barry Davis. He's learned from Iowa in practice, and Barry Davis was always shooting a high crowd, so he just got great at defending it. So when other people would try that on him, he just... You know, had so much stuff just to throw them on their back it was impre impressive. He's one of my favorite wrestlers to watch, Randy Lewis. As far as behavior, people who are great, what they do typically is they simplify their life. Don't waste any of your time on BS. You shouldn't be um, doing things that waste your time and distract you. You know, I recommend no alcohol, not one drop, no tobacco ever, no MJ, no drugs, none of that BS. That's for people who aren't going anywhere with their life. You want to just be training, getting your sleep, staying out of any nonsense. Um, those are all things that will accelerate your performance. you got to get to bed early so you get your sleep. Um, and it, it's good to learn something about nutrition. You know, a high-carbohydrate diet, primarily plant-based. That's the best diet. All the fat will make your red blood cells clump together and you'll decrease tissue oxygenation. It'll impair your performance. You see that if you study athletes. You know, wrestling is basically an endurance sport. You got much better endurance with a carbohydrate meal. Fats screw up oxygen delivery. Okay, uh, don't emphasize weight loss. A lot of stupid people and a lot of lousy coaches will put too much emphasis on losing weight, trying to get down to the lower weight class. That's a bad idea, I think, especially when you're young because it takes a lot of the fun out of wrestling. You'll be too tired to learn wrestling technique. It'll have a negative effect on your schoolwork. That tends to lead to burnout. Um, the guys I've seen who went on to be fantastic, All-Americans and national champions at the college level, they put most of their time into learning technique. That's the path to greatness in wrestling. Um, as far as strength, don't worry too much about strength in the weight room uh, because all these guys I know who are great, I can't think of a single one who spent that much time in the weight room. Yeah, it's kind of fun to lift weights, but it doesn't make that big a difference for the most part for wrestling from what I've seen. If you're wrestling year-round just from you know wrestling every week, you become pretty strong. And what also makes a guy really strong is that they know how to obtain good position, inside control, and they're, they're just, they're always so tight on getting into good position that they are very, very strong. So it's okay to lift weights, I mean, but don't think that's gonna make you a great wrestler. It's a well-known joke amongst wrestlers that guys come into the weight room that are all muscle-bound and can, you know, bench press a lot and all that, and they really can't do that much in a wrestling room. They're too uncoordinated and awkward. Okay, this was just a documentary. It's available to watch free on YouTube. Um, it's at the UFC Fight Pass thing. This is the link to it, but I'll put the link below in the description, but you just go to that. You type in Mark Schultz's name. You'll get to it. So anyways, I hope that's helpful for you, and this will accelerate your improvement. So 
you can have a successful career, maybe get a college scholarship or have other uh, things you enjoy from it. So anyways, hope that helps.